What is peak oil? How does our energy consumption influence our lives? And lastly, what are the alternatives to using oil for our daily energy needs? The hydrocarbon molecules that exist in oil are just marvelous. They're capable of providing us uh, fuel for transportation, pharmaceuticals, fertilizers, feedstocks for plastic. They're just remarkable materials. And the problem is that at some point we're going to reach maximum oil production, which is called the peak. And of course, when that occurs, then we're really in a pickle. And the question is, what are we going to do about it? And people do not understand energy. They simply do not understand the difference between liquid fuels and windmills, between nuclear power and tractors. They simply don't really understand how things work. I don't mean that as a criticism. It just is part of the problem of education that's going to have to go along with people realizing the severity of the problem and what the important answers and the useful answers are likely to be. I don't think there's any way out. I think we've got to build things and do things on a scale that has never been done before. It has to be done worldwide. You only need to believe one fact or believe one thing to understand peak oil. And that one thing is that oil is a non-renewable resource. So here's the resource. This is how much we've been consuming. And if it's a, a limited resource, let's say this was the total amount, one trillion barrels of oil. You know, is it just going is this realistic that it would just drop to zero all of a sudden? This data comes from British Petroleum. One of the interesting things you see is that in 1965, the United States was the world's biggest oil producer. As we go through the years, you see that in 1970, the U.S. peaked in oil production. They have never produced as much oil per day as they did back in 1970. In 2005, 33 of the oil producing regions around the world were past peak. Some of them significantly, if you look at the United States here, you can see it's significantly off its peak production. As we go through into the late 80s, into the 90s, oil became cheaper again, U.S. consumption went up again. In 1993 was the year that the U.S. started importing more oil than they were producing. And finally, we get up to 2005, and the UK has just started to become a net oil importer again. So that gives you an idea of the worldwide situation. But then if you look at what the estimates are, based on our current reserves, this is really the scenario we're looking at right here. And this takes into account all the sources of oil including tar sands, which is this black part here, or they're called oil sands or heavy oils, from um, Canada, Alberta, Canada, and from Venezuela, Maine. And I think it's just to say that uh, peak oil, uh, I don't think I've heard the two words put together at the start of the year, and now I end the year thinking that peak oil should um, be in the minds of every government minister for every bit of policy that's ever made. The economic impact that most peak oil educators believe is likely is that, that there's going to be recession, depression, like the Great Depression, or perhaps a series of recessions. If you imagine we're here, close to here, when the, the world economy starts to be pinched by declining oil supply, there'll probably be a recession right away, and that might be starting already. So we have to get a move on now, but isn't there some alternative to oil? What are the most promising kinds of alternative sources of energy? Welcome back. As many countries try to lessen their dependency on fossil fuels, there's now a drive to seek alternative sources. The most popular alternative is biofuels, where Brazil has taken the lead. Squeezing ethanol from sugarcane, they export billions of litres to the energy-hungry United States each year. 
Malaysia is also capitalizing on the growing demand and converting palm oil to biodiesel. You've got wind power that's becoming popular too. Germany, the US, India have all made large investments in wind turbines. And with bountiful sunshine, Spain is home to Europe's first commercially operated solar power plant. But even as the search continues for different types of fuel, oil remains the primary source of energy. But we should not support everything immediately. Biofuels have the drawback of replacing food supplies with fuel supplies. Our biggest problem actually is this. It's the fact that when you start putting wheat and burning wheat in car engines, wheat prices go up. And it's not just wheat prices. Just about every food can be converted into biofuel, every form of starch. And not only that, even if it's only wheat that you put in your car engines, what that means is people say, oh, why am I growing soybean? Let me grow wheat instead. So soybean crops are diverted into wheat, which means that we now have a global soybean oil crisis. The price of soybean oil has soared. Um, so people think, oh, I'll plant more soybean and a bit less rice. And then we have rice shortages. So, uh, and then we think, ah, oh, why am I having this forest when it could be land for cultivating? And so you have trees put, cut down in Indonesia to convert into, into places where you can grow just about any kind of food. And neither should we immediately trust governments and corporations, because energy is always a strategy game. And so we should look at what governments and corporations are actually doing, instead of just listening to their stories. The California Air Resources Board declared that if auto companies wanted to do business in state, they would have to produce zero emission vehicles to the tune of 2% of California sales by 1998, increasing to 5% by 2001 and 10% by 2003. Well, all the car companies got on board and went to court and sued uh, to get this stopped, which is, you know, it's utterly ridiculous because the technology is here now. There has to be, there, there doesn't need to be any R&D on this. And neither does there have to be uh, CSP solar energy. Solar energy has become more and more mature, and the prices are going down and down and down per kilowatt hour. Especially now that oil has become more expensive, as governments are slowly passing bills to support all kinds of renewable energy as a last solution, the R&D continues, and CSP could provide in a small part of the Sahara for all the world's energy right now. And you can find a lot of documentation on the site that just popped up here in the screen. So as this information about CSP solar is passing, let's move to alternatives for fossil fuels because we don't always use electricity as a power source. Let's look at a biofuel that doesn't have a problem with replacing food supply, it's algae. Here on the roof of the power station for the Massachusetts Institute of Technology is the test of a plan to make hydrogen from sunlight using the everyday miracle of photosynthesis. The gas making the bubbles in these green tubes comes from the power plant's smokestack. And the green stuff is algae. So algae goes down, starts out in a tank, gets picked up by a pump, goes up into the reactors, and then gravity takes control moves it through the reactors, they get exposed to sunlight, go back into the tank, and the cycle is repeated over and over again. Uh, I know that, that algae is the fastest organism, fastest growing plant on the planet, and it sequesters the greatest amount of carbon dioxide. But at the same time, it produces lipids, basically vegetable oil, and a lot of it. So if you look at a single cell of algae in the right species, as much as 50% of its body weight is a high-grade vegetable oil. So while we're sequestering carbon dioxide, we're also producing these high-grade lipids that can be used for a variety of purposes. So technology just needn't be the problem. What could be the problem, however, is us making the bad decisions. Just imagine what our economy would look like if all the efforts into the war in Iraq uh, would be turned into energy transition. We would have a totally changed economy by now. But the fact that that doesn't happen Cause a doubt over our future. Sometimes I feel like I'm going down. Sometimes I feel
feel like I'm over. 